So, so it's an important question. I think part of it just goes back to the fact that we have to destigmatize Nubian Square, period, right? Nubian Square, yes, does need to be a, a place on point of pride, but we do that by activating that space. You know, how many folks were out for you know, Nubian Nights, right? Where they had jazz performances and live music performances. That was fantastic. That was a celebration of community. That was a celebration of creativity. And it brought people to the square. We know that you know, activated streetscapes where you have people walking around are safer, they are more active, they are more vibrant, they are more economically viable. So that's a big part of what we have to do down there. But part of that goes from the city taking a you know, forward-facing model and really being the ones who are in there who are putting the work that we have to do to create the kind of programming, whether it's you know blocking off streets uh, like we've had for Savor the Square over the summer and making sure that those things are permanent, making sure that we're talking with our local businesses as well, right? Talking with our Main Streets organizations and asking them, what are the challenges you're facing and why are you facing it in the first place? Where is that intersection of, as we were saying, housing and addiction and so many other social issues that are causing it to not be the kind of economically viable and economically vibrant part of the city that it needs to be. But if we're not doing this, if we're not having those intentional conversations and if we're not making sure that we're letting people outside of our community know that this is a place with good businesses where you should be going, where you should be patronizing, where you should be spending your money each and every day, it's never going to be what it needs to be. So we have to make sure that we are not only advocates for it, but we are also ambassadors for it to every corner of the city. And I, you know, thank you for that. I, I just wanted to just quickly add, because I know there's more questions here, is that what I find to be really interesting too is, um, is that the city of Boston public works, right? How frequent they clean up the garbage, right? What frequency, and if you look at certain neighborhoods, they get multiple times. They go in the morning, sometimes they go in the afternoon, and sometimes at night, right? You probably see them more than you see your boyfriend. Um, and so I think that there is some issues there that we need to really start looking at in terms sure. of equity, right? Why are certain neighborhoods better maintained than others? And I think that that is a conversation when we start thinking about um, Nubian Square and we think about Eggleston Square. There's other parts across the city that are get absolutely no love until you start making some noise about it. But I think there's a, a need for more accountability in that space. And I also think that we need to start doing a deeper dive and not just auditing it, but like putting it out there. Let's, let's get some transparency. What's the difference between West Roxbury and Roxbury? Um, why do we have this frequency here than over there, right? And if, it's, if, it, if it has nothing to do with just the fact that there's probably less foot traffic or whatever the case is, there must be a reason why. But we need to know what that reason is but we still need to also, once we <coughs> discover the reason, we need to fix the problem, period. Thank you. I just want to give you a little hope. Um, Nubian Square, I think, in, in the next five to ten years is going to look completely different. They've already started a lot of renovations there. Just unlike the construction end of it, I see a lot of blueprints, I see a lot of plans going into work. I think there will be more housing going there. Hopefully it stays affordable. My fear about Nubian Square is the fact that when it, when it does get decked out, the prices are gonna rise. That's right. We need to figure out how to keep our families in Boston, how to keep our senior citizens in Boston. It, it seems once they get to a certain point, that's when everyone gets hauled out. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure they're not studio apartments, they're not one bedroom apartments, that they're actually family apartments. And, and so many people have told me, well, you can't call something family apartments. You can. If you can have veteran apartments, if you can have senior apartments, you can have family apartments. Somebody just needs to step up and put it there. Thank you. Give it up.